out west, Washington, undefeated. Still in the top five. We didn't see that shake up before five, as we talked about in the rankings reaction show. But this Huskies team, as Danny mentioned earlier, not the favorite to win the Pac-12. And not even a favorite in this game. Washington finds itself as a short underdog going up against Oregon State. Um, but we have been... I think we've been kind to Oregon State this year. I think we have, we're still sort of celebrating the success, acknowledging it's not a perfect team, nitpicking a little, but you know, I, I don't think we we hold Oregon State to the same standard as some of these other teams in the Pac-12. They are at the they're almost like at the top of tier two, so we're not grading them against tier one. Well, they're going to be graded against tier one going up against Washington. Do you agree with Vegas that this is a spot? where Oregon State's going to be able to hand the Huskies a loss that shakes up the Pac-12 race and the playoff race? And if so, you know how, how does it happen for uh, for the Beavers? They're, they're going to have to control the ball and and literally just run Washington over with this run game, You know, throw play action stuff, hit those shots. Or, Oregon State is a different team at home. They really are. And it, I think because the Pac-12 is so spread out, maybe a, a couple teams in that league are – there's a lot of really good coaches in this league. I mean, Jonathan Smith, Lanning. I, I think Dickert is probably a pretty good coach. His roster's kind of falling apart this year. Like, is Chip Kelly a top half coach in the Pac-12? If he's not, that really says something about the depth of this league. But Jonathan Smith is is one of the best coaches in the country. And I think he'll have a really good plan here to keep this Washington defense off balance. If, if you look at like similar opponents here, I mean, Washington struggled with Sanford. Oregon State smoked Stanford like 62 to 7 or what or 10 or whatever it was, 17 over the weekend. Washington has sort of been floundering for about a month now. I mean, they struggled, did not score an offensive touchdown at home against a, a, a pretty bad Arizona State team. I think they had the flu, which to me is a legitimate excuse uh, and something that we should keep in mind, or at least there, there's rumors that they had it. But I, I think they can move the football. My, my concern with Oregon State, how many – Good passing games has Oregon State seen this year. Uh, they right? faced Cam Ward. But yeah, and that was back when when Washington State was a little healthier, and it was 38-35 loss. Right. right. I, and he threw for like 360 or something on him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cal, Oregon State was a shootout, like 52-40. So that was kind of wild. Um, you know, UCLA moved it on him some. Arizona didn't move it great. That was an interesting game. So if Washington needs to go and put up a crooked number, like if 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 the Huskies need to go throw 45 on the board, can they do it? Because the secondary has been beatable at times this year. You mentioned that Oregon State has been a different team at home. It's true. But the other thing to look at too, which is concerning if you're Washington in this game, is like Washington's defense overall is, you know, we've talked about it. It's not good. It's much worse on the road than it has been at home, like noticeably worse when you kind of just compare the numbers and the performance. So now you're going on the road, and the one area Washington really struggles, stopping the run. They are very much not good at it. They are, you know, it's – so Oregon State likes to run the ball. They're probably going to lean on it with Damian Martinez and DJU in that run game, and they have a terrific offensive line. Like Talise Fuaga gets a lot of the, you know, deserved hype for that line, but the whole unit's very good. It's one of the best offensive lines in the country. That is going to be a real concern for Washington here. And the, the counter I'm expecting to see, we've kind of already seen. Like the first eight games of the year, Washington ran the ball 37% of the time. Last two weeks against Utah and USC, Washington has run the ball 57% of the time. Is that an effort to kind of help the defense? by helping keeping them off the field because Oregon state's run defense isn't great either. You can move the ball on them on the ground. So I think you're going to see the Huskies try to lean on that. So to help their defense, but also and this is just speculation, maybe conserve Michael Penix who might not be 100%. So you're not having him drop back as often as you were and putting him at risk of injury. So that is going to be a very interesting thing that, thing to see because they have been running the ball more and they've been running it pretty damn effectively so if you could do that against this oregon state team which ranks 113th nationally in success rate against the run and 99th in epa per rush you could see a much you could see a whole lot of handoffs in this game yeah they've gotten dylan johnson going for washington he's been getting a lot more workload 
Um, DJ U's been playing a lot better. First five games, he had eight touchdowns, four interceptions. Last five games, 12 touchdowns, zero interceptions. He's playing much cleaner. He's a player like in the biggest spot sometimes. He hasn't come up the best. I think it is like, can Washington stop the run game? Can they shut down Damian Martinez? The other thing, too, is Penix, you mentioned him being a little bit banged up. His offensive line has been phenomenal. They've only been sacked. Uh, he's only been taxed seven times all season. Meanwhile, Oregon State, fifth in the country in sacks. Like, can they create pressure? You, know, you mentioned Corvallis. I was thinking about this because I've called games out there. It reminds me sort of like Carter Finley, like NC State's home field. Like, it's not discussed on the national stage as like a place that's, you know, oh, this like a, this top five atmosphere. But man, they they get after it. Like, it's mm. it's a fun environment. It's loud. The weather, there's always like a little haze, like, and it's a little drizzle. Like, it's just, it's, and which creates, ha- like, that could be an issue. Now, Seattle, you're probably used to that anyway. So it's not like Washington's going to get shocked going into that environment, but it is a tough place to play. I mean, Jonathan Smith has been unbelievable at home. So I think it's like, can, you know, can they get pressure on Penix? And can Washington, whose defense has been a very much a liability, can they get off the field? They spent a lot of money renovating that place recently, too, yeah. which is another area where that recent lawsuit could come in handy for Oregon yeah. State. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, the builder still needs to be paid. <laughs> yeah, invoices are sitting there. <laughs> um, I. It is. It's really fun to look at this and paint it as, you know, Michael Penix against DJ Uyunglele. But I, I'm starting to look at this and think about Dylan Johnson against Damian Martinez. You know, mm-hmm. for a lot of different reasons why they might both teams might be motivated to try and establish that run game. Uh, definitely something to keep an eye on there. Do you think, I mean, we got locks tomorrow, but you you don't need to spoil it, but give Oregon, you give Washington State, I mean, Washington a good chance to lose this game, right? I mean, you, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're an underdog. Okay. You know, like it's not a Noah Fafita team also, it's by the way. Yeah, it's a coin toss. It yeah. is Noah Fafita, by the way, tore him up too. Three touchdown passes, two seventy five. And if and if you want the total chaos, the fact that Oregon State hosts Washington and then plays Oregon next week is the like ultimate chaos agent for. I mean, what would? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oregon State, you just won the lawsuit, but how about how sweet would it be if you hand Washington and Oregon L's on their way out of the conference? That's what I mean, Oklahoma State's trying to do. Mm-hmm. They, they do that. They already handed one. You might as well just go win the whole damn thing. Right. You say major league, right? Like, isn't Oregon State still alive for this thing? Mm-hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Double look ahead letdown, though. Just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if no, if I think if Oregon State wins out, they're they're still alive for this deal. No, you're talking about for the Pac 12 title. Yeah. 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 Yes, they definitely are. I thought you were talking about for that's the, the whole damn thing. No, that's for them. No, they have two losses. They're they're, they're not yeah, gonna get they're the not there. But yeah. but yeah, like that. Winning a court case is nice, but the ultimate middle finger up to uh, Oregon and Washington as they say goodbye is to spoil their 2023 campaigns uh, with losses. And it's it, you look at the Vegas odds right now, you even think about the rivalry factor, as difficult as it would be to follow up a Washington win. Um, we'll, we'll see if it happens. Again, that is a Saturday night game. Uh, night on the East Coast, but, I mean, come on. 4.30 p.m. Eastern time in Corvallis, that's dark. 